Hi guys, welcome to the show today. I'm going to be talking to Ross Cunningham. Ross is an absolutely fantastic guy. Um, done a lot of great things. I don't know if you've seen his posts recently, things like the, the BBC Social, uh, the Social, and uh, his website, Mountains Men Minds. Um, it's all in this uh, uh, broadcast itself. I'm going to share just an introduction to Ross through this uh, uh, channel, and I'll just show you um, a bit about him uh, in the beginning. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this okay. And this is our reintroduction. This is something that Ross did for the, the BBC Social um, about uh, uh, Munro's and uh, his wee waste decks. The challenge you're pushing yourself, the question, like, why am I doing this? But once you get to the top of Munro's, it's a great feeling. It's a sense of achievement. My name is Ross Cunningham, I'm from Lynn Rothis in Fife, and one of my favourite hobbies is to go uh, hiking up Scotland mountains. In August and September 2017, um, I went through a depression. Um, it's something that I hadn't gone through before, and it's something I thankfully haven't gone through since, but it's obviously a really hard time. It can feel you drowning, it can feel just, it's a really horrible, horrible thing to go through, and a lot of the hobbies and things that you have, um, you just feel there's interest in them. Doing the exercise helps you really to try and get into a better place, kind of mentally, and lots of endorphins and things that come out from exercise um, that was really beneficial and so when I kind of go into that my friend um, recommended that I join her to go hiking up um, Monroe's and that's how I got into the Monroe wagon. So Dex is my eight-year-old dog, he's a Westie and he loves hiking, he's the one that's, that's dragging me up around this half the time. He's got wee legs so as much as he wants to do the, the whole walk um, there's times I've got to lift him up, rescue him from falling into a bog or about to carry him over a river while I'm getting totally soaked just so he can kind of make over okay. He's a creepy character and I think a lot of people quite like to see pictures of him uh, when I post him on social media, um, fresh Instagram, to see him at the top of uh, some of Scotland's highest mountains with some beautiful landscapes in the background. Um, I think a lot of people quite like that. From getting into hiking, I've really been getting out most weekends. A few of my friends have came along have been getting into hiking themselves as well, so it's nice to kind of to, to pass it on and encourage other people to, to get involved in it. Over 2018, I managed to get to the top of uh, 70 Monroes. It's a long way away getting to 282 Monroes. I'm still over 200 away from that final target, but I think, yeah, once I can do it, which I will, I think the next challenge will be to do more mountains like this in Scotland. Living in Scotland, I've realised how lucky I am and how lucky people in Scotland are to live in one of the most beautiful countries in the world, which Scotland clearly is. I would encourage people to, to get out and explore Scotland, to see parts of it that they've maybe never seen before. Uh, hiking's a great way to do that, sites you've never seen before. There's some beautiful landscapes up in Scotland's mountains that you just simply wouldn't see. You need to go to the top of mountains to see it. For anybody that's going through things like depression, it's just that it's a great escape and it's going to help you. It's going to help you clear your head. I mean, that's fantastic. So um, I just want to welcome on the show, uh, Ross Cunningham. Hi, Ross. How are you? Hi there. I'm good. How are you doing, Jim? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So so let me just, uh, who is Ross Cunningham? You know, who are you? Where have you come from? And, you know, tell us all about yourself. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess. Um, and first of all, just to say with that with that video, it was uh, put together by um, my good friend, Gavin Hugh, uh, Midget Bite Media, which is a, a video production business in and Fife, uh, you did a great job with that video. Um, just get in, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a Fifer, born in Kirkcaldy, uh, grew up in Glenrothes, and um, where I live just now. Um, went to Stirling University. I went to Glenrothes College to do video and television production, and then I went to uh, University of Stirling to film media there, and then I did a master's in film studies there. And then following that, um, I started up a video production business, doing uh, videos for sports clubs including the Five Flyers, um, and then I, I got involved doing some work with St. Johnston Football Club, um, who I got who I got a, a job with um, after after doing a, a good a good turn with them, and uh, was a media and comms manager for a few years. I went to work in politics, working for MPs and MSPs, um, and then I'm now back working at St. Johnston Football Club as, as the media and comms, comms manager. And I suppose that, that's career-wise, but in terms of, uh, yeah, what I really enjoy is exploring Scotland and over the last three and a half years as that kind of that video um, demonstrates um, my, my big passion is the outdoors and and discovering Scotland but not just not just Scotland in terms of the, like the highlands for the Munros but obviously this year um, I've had a, a great opportunity to explore Fife. Fife's a, a beautiful place one of the most beautiful parts parts of the world and um, this year's really been the opportunity to, to explore what's on on my doorstep. Yeah. So, so how did it all come about though? You know, how did all this come about in terms of the mountains men mind? You know, where where does that all come from? 
Yeah, so as, as kind of said in the video, um, yeah, I went through depression um, three and a half years ago now, roughly, and hill walking was really one of the big kind of saviors for me. It was something that gave me a, a real focus. It gave me something. There's so many things with hill walking that just there's like a huge benefit. You meet new people, you're seeing parts of Scotland you've never seen before. I suppose at the time when, when I was going through depression, it gave me, I found it really hard to concentrate um, on maybe and try and switch off because just my mind was just um, just a really, a really, bad, really bad place at, at, that, at that time. And I couldn't even like read a book. I couldn't watch a film. It was really hard just to, like, to try and switch off from, from kind of how I was feeling. But Munro's and, and mountains and hills, and actually I started off with, it, with the hills when I was going through depression, I was going up the Lowman Hills in Fife. Um, I just gave myself an objective to, to get to the top of Falkland Hill from, from where I was staying in Glenrothes and, and get back. And I, then I got into the Munro's. And I think with the Munro's, like the mountains, hills, it just gives you that objective. You can look towards it. You can be walking up towards it. You can think about other things. It's hard, but you've got that focus. You've got that drive. You've got that objective to get to the top of the hill. Yeah. And then to get up there and get back down again. And what I realised quite quickly was once I got back down again, I felt a lot better than when, when I started going up. So... I just got into a habit of going up every weekend and that just became, it just has now become a big part of my life. Um, yeah. Do, there, do, you think, do you think focusing on, they used to focus on the, the, the task at hand and think to yourself, oh, I've got to climb all the way up that hill. <laughs> and it's like, did, when you, did you kind of feel you were trying to put yourself off sometimes in the beginning and you thought, well, I better just go and do it? Um, I think like, yeah, actually, there was times actually going up. There'd be times, especially like initially when I was, yeah, first started going through depression at the start of it, there was times I'd maybe go up a hill or try to go up a hill and then I'd lose that motivation. I'd maybe get halfway up or a third of the way up and I'm just like, I can't I can't do this. Um, I'm just not feeling it to the end, come back down. And um, yeah. I think over time I managed to kind of push myself on. It just It's a simple focus. It's a really simple one. I'm going to get to talk and come back down and, and sorry i didn't ask, actually answer your question earlier uh mountains men mines um i suppose in the back of that bbc video lots of people from across scotland but around the world as well like hundreds of people got in touch with me through various means to to say they like the video they liked uh decks in the video like the mountains and things and um, a lot of people said about how maybe they went through mental mental health issues in the past or, or still go through it and and sent and said how maybe the hill uh, sorry the video inspired them to to take up hill walking and I really love that feeling of actually inspiring other people and um, helping other people who may be in similar situations to, to what I was in and so I thought with the website I could hopefully try to broaden that and the idea with it was to obviously with that BBC yeah. video my opportunity to share my story um, and I, I, but I knew a lot of people through hill walking that had kind of similar stories how they got into hill walking was kind of th through similar th um, similar ways or uh, related to mental health so it allowed people that I know quite well and people that I had met before to, to, to share their blogs, their stories on, on the website to hopefully inspire other people to, to get into hill walking as well. So that's where the, the idea for the website came from. Do you, th do you think do you think it's the open air then that helps people? It's just the sights and the sounds and engagement with nature. Do you think that's what does it? That's a huge thing. Uh, yeah, definitely got to go in nature. I think that there's like lots of studies and things um, like social prescribing as well that's been done to encourage people to just get outdoors um, I think that for a lot of people I suppose in my situation anyway I think that you can work at work obviously have, have a job that you love but you can maybe be like based in office maybe indoors all the time whereas I think like as humans we're actually really used to being outdoors that's like kind of a, a primal need is to, to be outdoors to, to feel part of nature and I think that it's just something that we all have within us that we've always we've got a connection with nature with the outdoors and in Scotland and Fife we live in a really beautiful part of the world but actually a lot of people in this country and in, in Fife as well don't, don't realize how beautiful a place we live in uh, we, we actually have to, to live in a lot of people go on holidays abroad and things in the summer or have in the past and maybe this this year has been an opportunity for people to actually realize what's on their on their doorstep and actually discover Scotland and I mean I've been exploring Scotland for the last three and a half years in terms of driving around different parts of it and hiking and things. Um, but there's still so much for me to explore. I'm not even really kind of scratch the surface with with what Scotland has has to offer. Yeah, I often say to a lot of people, if you're going out training, do not wear earphones. It's <laughs> the worst thing you could ever do because you're just creating a, 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 almost a false high through the music you're listening to, whereas you should really be actually relaxing while you're exercising. Um, and it's the engagement with nature that actually helps you do that. And, and it, it keeps your mental well-being, doesn't it? 
Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think yeah, that, that's... I was I would say that straight away. I think for a lot of people, um, people like listening to music when they're outdoors and stuff. But me personally, um, I like the idea that I can just like maybe turn my phone on to airplane mode. Um, I'm not listening to music. I'm just I'm just out in the hills enjoying the countryside. There was a I remember there's a point uh, a year or so ago I was out hiking in, in Glen Shee with my friend Megan, and I remember there was a point where it was up a hill and you're so far away from the traffic. There wasn't a wind, and it was just silent. And that's the first time in my life I've ever heard absolute silence and no actual sounds anywhere. And it was such a beautiful thing to to experience. Um, and I think that, yeah, just getting out, switching off is, is a great thing for mental health. And to, and to do it out, outdoors, obviously, is, is a great thing. I've often, I've often been walking the Fife Coastal Path and I've heard the bird singing. And I've actually heard it. I've, <laughs> I've felt myself thanking the bird <laughs> <laughs> for its song in the morning. <laughs> And, I'm, and then I'm thinking to myself, Jim, are you nuts? <laughs> no, that's a great thing. No, I think with nature and with, with animals as well, and when you mentioned birds and bird noises, I mean, uh, earlier at, at this summer, like once the lock, lockdown restrictions lifted and we could travel a bit, I was, uh, I remember I was out hiking with uh, my friend Anna um, in Glen Etive. We're, we're doing a sunrise walk up a Munro next to Ben Starav. And <laughs> just when you said about the birds, the birds' noise, um, I remember there was actually like the the stags were rutting. That was their their sound. And it was really cool. So I'd never heard that sound before. And it was quite a little bit of a scary sound to hear because they're obviously quite close to us. We were going up in the dark, and all you're hearing is this loud noise of the stags. But it's no, it's a beautiful thing to, to go out and experience the the, the countryside. And yeah, listen to the birds, listen to the the deer, all the animals and things that um, that are out in, in Scotland. So you talked about Munro bagging. So you know where are you in your in your challenge? Then do you, you want to do the whole lot of them? Yeah, definitely. I think once I got once I realised that how much I enjoyed hill walking and Munro bagging. Once it wasn't something I initially thought. I think that once I did 10, 20, I was sort of looking like, yeah, I'm doing quite a lot of these, um, not pretty easily, but um, in a short period of time, I did quite a lot. So I, I kind of realised at that point, yeah, I want to I want to do all the Munros. That'd be a, that'd be a great a great thing to. To do and not just for the achievement of doing it but to see different parts of scotland that i hadn't seen before there's a great opportunity to mm-hmm. do that on road bagging um just now i'm on 180 182 so there's wow. exactly 100 to go so yeah over, over three and a half years since i've got into it i'm averaging over a month a week and um, i think roughly so um or something around that so yeah next next year potentially i could hopefully do them all it just depends obviously with the uh, travel restrictions and things how that how that plays into it yeah, because I think when I saw one of your videos, you were at number eighty, um, and you know before, and uh, and I'm thinking, wow, so you've done a hundred since then. Yeah, yeah, it's just. It just do you think it becomes addictive? What sorry? Do you think it becomes addictive? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think, but a good and a in a good way, um, because it's it's so good for your mental health, your physical health, and yeah, as, as soon as you do one, you, you got that objective one weekend to get up to one Munro, and then once you've done that, you get down, you're like, oh, what am I going to go into next? And it, it becomes like, obviously, a lot of people, including myself, um, in, in the past, like, say things like with football, you get into a, a habit, a routine of going to the football every weekend, and I guess the, the mine's, mine has been over the last three and a half years is that I've gone into a routine of, of going hill walking every weekend, but it's, uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, it, it definitely becomes becomes addictive, but it's uh, in, in a good way, hopefully. Yeah, and there's 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 Dext as well, eh? You know, when, I mean, I've got some. I think I've got some photographs of Dext here, or just a wee blast in here. So there's Dext, you know, uh, you know, um, absolutely wonderful dog, eh? Yeah. What, um, is, what age is she now, or is it he, he or she? It's he. He's, he's ten yeah. now. I would, I would say Dex is, is. There's only one picture there, of Dex. He's in the bottom left with the uh-huh. with the hill the, that sleek and Wester Ross in the background. So he's the one that's kind of proudly on that. Bit of yeah. yeah, he's he's ten years old. He uh, he's actually laying in the bed just now having a, having a wee sleep. Yeah, when I first got into to Monroe Baggins, so he was like six or seven at that point. So we, uh, I remember, <laughs> I think about Ben Honsey. That was the first Monroe that he did, and I remember taking him and thinking like he's a Westie. I've taken him on, on long walks and stuff before, but like obviously mountains are completely different. And I, in my head, I thought, right, I'll take him for half an hour and see if he gets on and. Um, but he, he was totally fine, and then we kept we kept going, and I kept thinking, right, well, I'll turn, well, I'll turn back. Um, but he was the one, like, it's it's hard to believe being a Westie, um, but he was the one, like, far ahead of me. Like, I, I'd have him on the lead because there's there's sheep and things about as well, so um, he'd be on the lead. So, but, but it was almost like having a husky. He was the one that I was on, I was on to keep up with him. It was pretty incredible. So we did did Ben Honsey, and then we did other kind of like kind of shorter, kind of more straightforward Munros, 
Um, and then I, I just realised that he was completely unfazed by them. He really enjoyed it. It was a great thing for me and him to get into the, the hills together. I actually got a bit of, um, obviously a bit of a bond as well, I think, from from going outdoors. Um, you, you kind of build up here. I mean, I've always had a, a bond with him. He's my, he's my dog. But I think actually doing like the Munros and things kind of brings you a little bit closer as well. Um, and yeah, he loved it. So he's done 62 Munros. Um, he's now, he's 10 wow. he in, in November. So I think kind of over the last year and a bit, I've just sort of slowed him down. My stuff. So now we'll just do the five fills together. I, I wouldn't take him up uh, Munro's. I just feel like, obviously, as he's getting older, um, we've, we've had Wes's in the family before, and you sort of like recognise kind of older dog traits and things on him. So, um, yeah, he, he started doing like the the smaller hills now. But no, he's every one of those sixty two Munro's um, was a piece of cake from, and um, which is hard to believe and hard for me to believe. I think initially when I first thought he won't be able to to do half an hour maybe, but um, he absolutely loved them. It reminds me a bit like Go with Oaks. Do you remember John Noakes and Shep the dog? That's oh, why you too young. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just me? <laughs> well, John Noakes used to be on Blue Peter and he had Shep the dog. So what John Noakes did, he did Go with Noakes, where him and Shep went through various challenges right throughout the UK about different things he would get involved in. And he used to take Shep up the hills and everything and then and in treacherous conditions. And he was always going on about, you know, his, his catchphrase was, get, get down, Shep. Because <laughs> Shep always jumped on everybody. Um, but but for the older generation, we'll all remember that, but you'll obviously not. But, but if you get a chance, Google it. It's a fantastic uh, thing. And and, and, I, and I, I have a sneaking suspicion you and Dex could pull that off and have uh, and have uh, go with Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that would that would be that would be good fun to see that. Um, that would be absolutely fantastic. You know, I, I, I look forward to a lot more of your posts. Uh, can we come to talk about Fife? I mean, what is it you love so much about Fife? Then I think that I mean, obviously, I was born here, brought up here. Um, it's my home, so I, I just I think I feel like a strong attachment to anyway, just being being my home region. Um, and I think. I think like from like through life and stuff, I'm I'm a big cow and beef supporter and. Um, I remember um, kind of growing up in things when people talk about Central Park. I don't know if you've been to Central Park yourself. The, Aye, the stock car. <laughs> yeah, I think because of, because of that, because of the stock car track and stuff around it, because of the fence and things, it was always a stadium that I felt from other football supporters when I spoke to them, they'd always talk it down and say it was really horrible and stuff. Um, but like I've always loved Central Park and so like to kind of counter, so to kind of counter that and to try to show people how much I really loved it was that i made a, a short document documentary at university for my masters and um, called when the sun shines which you can find on, on youtube and that was sort of like me trying to show other people like why i really love central park and and why it means a lot to a lot of people and like with fife as well there's people that i think people like in other parts of scotland um love love coming to fife but there's there's people i think sometimes there's like a reputation sometimes that fife like there's some negative things about fife for, for example um that's that's not that great a place or whatever, but I love Fife. I think it's great, and thought so. I think that getting out and about and exploring Fife and kind of showcasing it and all the really beautiful parts of Fife is, it is one of the most beautiful regions in Scotland. You've got the Lowman Hills, you've got the hill walking element of it, and the Fife Coastal Path. There's lots of great country walks as well, and woodland walks, and there's lots of like great sites as well, like say like the Bunnett Stain, uh, John Knox's pulpit. Lots of really like beauty, like beauty spots that can I think as well from myself experience of doing the Munros, I know that from my experience of doing some Munros, there's definitely hills in Fife that are a better day out than some yeah. Munros that I've done and so you get some better and um, better views as well so Fife um, I think really punches above its weight in terms of what it's got to offer in terms of outdoor spaces for people I, I just I, I really I'm doing my best to try to showcase that to people and to show that Fife is well, I can see that because I looked at your one on Vanata Hill and I couldn't believe it. We'll play that just now. I mean, I, I, that's an amazing hill. Coming from the Gaelic to mean the high hill, Vanate, which is the kingdom's second highest hill by prominence, is a short day out by hill walking standards. The view north from just beyond the summit reveals the incredible sight of Loch Leven, Scotland's largest lower loch. The craggy north face plunges down to reveal the beauty and flatness of the loch and provides a real feeling of space. 
And beyond in all directions are mountains and hills, with Bishop Hill, one of the Lowlands, the most distinguished. On a clear enough day, many of roads to the north and west will also be visible. That's an amazing view, eh? Explore by Narky Hill, this. as the sleeping giant, and decide for yourself if it is indeed <laughs> the best viewpoint in the Kingdom of Bright. Well, some of those shots again, um, <clears throat> Gavin Hugh from the Dubai Media got got those those shots as a kind of credit there. Uh, yeah, Bernard, I think that so at <laughs> going into this year, so obviously before the pandemic, and um, with the last um, couple two and a half years before that, for example, doing the Munros, I'd just be focused on doing the Munros. So uh, there's no Munros in Fife, so um, I'd really be focused on other parts of Scotland. And earlier this year, even I suppose before before the pandemic started, there was a, quite a few storms in the weekends when I was going to be out. Um, Monroe bagging up in the north of Scotland. So because of the storms over a couple of weekends, I thought, right, I'm just going to see what's on my doorstep. And one of the hills that went up was was Benarty Hill. And I was I was blown away. I couldn't believe I'd not been up that hill before. Obviously, I've been focused on doing the Monroes. But is Benarty uh, up by Vane Farm then? Yeah, it's just to the south of Vane Farm. So the, I mean, the, the way I've always went up it is from the other side, kind of towards Locker Meadow, which kind of go through Bellingry into uh -huh. your first right from the kind of Glenrothes side coming into it. And there's like a, a parking bit up there. And uh, yeah, so it was one that I knew my, my granda um, who, who passed away about four years ago. He, I know that he'd been up there a few times and that was one of his favourite hills, but I just never had the opportunity to go up. And when I went up, like I said, I just couldn't believe how, how beautiful it was. Not just when you go to the summit and you can see around the kind of panoramic of the area, but then if you go that a little bit further and go over that little fence and you're looking right down towards Loch Leven, Scotland's largest lowland loch and Bishop Hill, just, just behind it and Munro's in all different directions. Um, incredible! I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe I, I'd never been up there to, to see that, and I've been up um, about four or five times at least um, since that over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that takes us on to the ten, uh, five ten highest hills. You know, um, when we when we scroll through this West Lomond, I mean, that's a cracking hill. You know, up there. I mean, I tend to I tend to park at the east and then run, or or some people do off road mountain biking from the east to the west and back. Um, Although I've I've been up the top of West Lomond and then suddenly somebody comes cycling up, <laughs> I'm thinking, how on earth did you get up here? <laughs> it's steep. I think yeah, people underestimate for for steepness. Um, like pe again, people when they talk about hill walking or things, they don't think about Fife, but it's, Fife's got some great hills. And yeah, that list that I put that together last night because um, at the start of the year, and I suppose after the the lockdown and things as well, I was really interested to see what hills were on our doorstep in, in Fife. Fife and obviously I knew of the Loman Hills and uh, Bernard Hill at that point, but I was I was looking online. I couldn't find a list anywhere of like a top ten definitive yeah. list, and I thought, well, I I really like to to find out. So I, I looked into it and I looked at different sites, and I, I got this list together of, of the, the the ten and I put it online yesterday. So hopefully it inspires other people to get into. And obviously, if you click on the the names, um, you can it takes you to a link to open up like the walking route to to do it. So this was something I really would have really loved at the start of the year to to get into. It. So at least people having this now, especially now that more people are seeing things on their doorstep. Um, yeah. And um, hopefully that inspires people to maybe think about doing all 10 at some point this year. That would be a great objective. I mean, there's Knock Hill. I mean, Knock Hill's, well, Knock Hill's renowned with the racing. Um, yeah. That's why I used to go to Knock Hill. Um, but I never really realised that there was a hill there, if that makes sense, even though it's called <laughs> Knock Hill. <laughs> Hello, the clue's in the name. <laughs> That, that was I mean, I just you mentioned the names there. Um, another thing as well, I, I got in touch with Gaelic and Fife, uh, Kirsty Strachan from from Gaelic and Fife, and I kind of just made a suggestion because from doing all the Munros and, and things, obviously all the, the Munros are, are Gaelic names, and I'd made the suggestion to Kirsty of what we, we did something where we got local school kids to to make a, a Gaelic name for the Fife Hills, and she, she said, well, actually, all the names in Fife, the Fife Hills, come from Gaelic. Um, and so we got talking about it and then I made that made a video that got quite a good a good response where we explain the different meanings of the hills and so knock hill actually means hill hill because it comes from the Gaelic uh, knock or I can't remember to pronounce it properly but knock wow. okay. which means hill so on a map it would just be in knock on on a map and then someday it's been anglicised it would just make it knock hill and then it's just become knock hill so it just means hill hill um, yeah so where's sailing hill where's that Salon yeah Salon's in the west so, Salon's actually, you can do Salon Hill and uh, Knock Hill together. And there's like quite a big drop off between them, but you, you do that, it's kind of like a big a big circuit. So it's kind of like in, in the west of Fife, just north of Dunfermline. Okay. And we've got Bonatti Hill, which is the one we saw in the video. Larga Law. See, Larga Law has got to be a staple for me because it's right on my doorstep. It's a, it's a good one for me personally for running. I tend to run up. I, I 
I before my injury, I'm I'm getting over it now in rehabilitation. But uh, you know, I used to do a lot of hill running. So you know, I was up the the Clough, uh, Ben Clough uh, over in uh, Alva. Um, Largo was always a staple for me just to run up and run back down. Um, it was a good five kilometres um, if you go up and round by the fields. Um, but it's, it's stunning views when you get to the top of Largo Law. Yeah, well, I suppose what sets Largo Law, Largo Law apart from the other five hills of the of the city, of the kind of, in the top ten is that yeah, it's right on the coastline really, and um, you've got a beautiful view right down the, the five coastal path and in, in, in the different directions, east and west. And then looking across the fourth um, as well. But you've got a nice, really cool view looking right back into Fife as well, across the countryside, looking towards the Loman Hills um, to Norman's Law. And um, yeah, yeah it's. it's the back of you, you see Dundee and everything. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, so it's just a, a, a brilliant a brilliant viewpoint. And just, yeah, it's a great. It's, yeah, it's, it's what I think is really good about the Fife Hills as well is that they're a lot more accessible than other hills in other parts of Scotland. Like you could take your kids up Largo Law. I mean, it, depending on their age, um, obviously, and things, but it's not out, out of reach for people to do these sorts of hills and to get the kind of views you can get from the, from the top of them, and particularly uh, Largo one Law. The, one of the things I, 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 um, I take an analogy to Largo Law is just when you think you're at the top, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> There's another hill to climb. <laughs> you just think that's it. I've done it, and then you oh no, no another one. And 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 to me, a Largo Law is a bit like an analogy of life. It's just like just as you think you're at the top of something, it's like a not. You've got another one to go. Um, and and that kind of that kind of sums up Largo Law for me. But once you get to the top, it's glorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it's yeah that that wee drop off um, as well because I think it used to be a, a volcano. So that's why it's kind of got the two sides to. Yep, in an active volcano years ago. Um, it's a glorious place. Norman's Law. Um, so where's Norman's Law about, for the people that don't know? That's, do, 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 is that Luthery? Um, yeah, next, yeah, you park in Luthery. It's a village, so it's kind of in, in the north of Fife. It might be the most northerly of the, these 10 hills in, in Fife. Yep. Brilliant viewpoint. Um, what I loved about this one is that you're walking through a farm to get to, and I hadn't done, done it before until um, till this year. And walking through the farm and i wasn't really kind of sure what what to expect how it's going to look sometimes the hills are just kind of the high point in a, in a field almost sometimes it doesn't it doesn't feel that dramatic but i love this when i kind of came around the corner and i saw this view of like the craggy this kind of what would be the east face craggy east face of of norman's law it just it looks beautiful it's uh it's a stunning hill and then this it's not as intimidating as it looks you can kind of go up the left a little bit and up the slope up to the top and once you get to the top yeah the views over to dundee in particular are really good back towards the the Loman Hills, and it's called Norman's Law, but it's um, in the 12th century, up to the 12th century, um, it was called Dunmore, which is Gaelic for the Great Fortress, and um, it used wow. to be used by the Picts as a, I think it was the Picts anyway, as a as a fortress. And then once you get to the top, there's uh, the old kind of the bricks and and things from from an old fort. So I think similar to I don't know if you ever up to East Loman, but there's like a sign on East Loman that the 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 car park up there, and it shows what East Loman used to look like as a as a hill fort. Um, so obviously the kingdom of Fife, it was where the, the Picts had had their own kingdom. It was his own, not I wouldn't say a country, yeah. but like own, the kingdom of Fife. That's where that's where it all comes from. Yeah, the kingdom of Fife, most yeah. important thing in Scotland, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, now, how do you say this, Lumbeni? Lumbeni Hill. Yeah. Um, now this one, this is probably the one that I would, uh, I think, in terms of summit views, it's it's. The least good because what you kind of can't see that the high point in that hill there there's lots of trees and then there's also like um, power lines that go through the the summit so once you get to the summit it's a bit underwhelming because you can't see anything really and uh also the big power lines but the walk through pit maiden forest which i think is technically in perth and ross but the the walk through pit maiden forest is beautiful and that's a, a really a really popular area for for uh, um, cycling and for dog walks and things so that's a really that's a really good walk but maybe the summit is a bit underwhelming compared to the rest of the I, I tend to like the forests because the forests are, are are more engaging. They keep your mind more active because there's more things to 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 be engaged with round about you. You know, and and especially if you're doing if you're doing running, if you're doing off road running, um, it tends to be more. You know, you've got all these hilly terrains, and you could you know, it's it's the old thing about the wee adrenaline rush that you could fall a trip at any time, and it's just that excitement, and it gives you as a result of that, and and that's what probably that's what probably gets me into running. Um, and especially up hills and in countryside. And yeah, with Pimenton Forest, there's the trails there are, are brilliant. Like there's a track you can walk that I think used for, for cars and things going up. But um, even if you go off the track and go through like the, the walking routes and things through the forest, they're really well made. They're not really like usually when you go through forest, they're 
muddy and boggy and things, but it's a really well kept uh, forest. So yeah, I'd recommend it. So it's a good one. Just maybe not the the viewpoint. Uh, Give me help. Yep, that is is it Colesi, I think it is where you park there to go up that one. Yep. Yeah, that's really, that's a really nice one. That's um, <clears throat> again, it's similar to Lumbeni in the in the sense that there's a few trees at the top, so it's it's not brilliant in terms of a, a viewpoint, but it's a nice walk. You're walking for a good bit through um, through some beautiful countryside. You can mm -hmm. see in the background, you can see uh, one of the Lomond Hills and um, beyond. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really good walk and just the the top. Um, I, I, I can assume decks like that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's loving it. He's loving it. that's that's the rock when you when, you know you, when you get to the top because there's that that kind of like a, a small boulder that's at the top that that Dex is is standing on there. That's when you know you've you've reached the top. And finally, Mount Hill. Uh, now this is on the way out to Newborough, possibly. Uh, yeah, just get, just a little bit to the southeast of it. Um, it's sort of between Norman's yeah. Law. It's it's quite close to Norman's Law. It's just across, it's like just kind of to the south of Norman's Law. Um, yeah, it's but it's a, it's a good it's a good one. Um, once you get to, again, once you get to the top, there's lots of trees as you can see that kind of block the summit. But there's that huge is it Hope Town monument? I think it is. Um, it's pretty massive, and you can see that that monument from uh, tens of miles away. If you're up the the Loman Hills, you can you can spot it pretty clearly, even though you're you're a good bit away. I've seen it. I've seen it a few times. Um, I tried to get a drone up there, but for some reason it just wouldn't go high enough. Um, <laughs> to you know to to have a look at it from afar and just yep. uh, circle around it. Um, yeah, so you know that's the hills. Um, so can we cover the one of the most my, my most uh, exciting bits is the Fife Coastal Path. Uh, is uh, the Fife Coastal Path is unbelievable. So I'm going to see if I could pop onto that, um, and we'll just play this wee video. I think you've got a wee video here, haven't you? Of the Fife Coastal yeah. Path. Yeah, my favourite part of it. Yeah, got my wee now. <laughs> oh, get some sound on. That would help eh? I'll just start that again. Give me two seconds. It's okay. Yeah, that's my favourite part of the coastal path. The Fife Coastal Path is one of Scotland's classic long distance walking routes. Like the Carthage and Newbra, they are 150 miles of stunning scenery, encompassing the entirety of the Kingdom's coastline. But which section is best for a half day's exploring? Here is my choice. Let's walk from Anstruther to Creel. That's a fantastic walk. Yeah, I, I've done. I've not done the whole um, coastal path, but I've done quite a few sections of it, and that was definitely my favourite. I've done that two or three times now. Again, this is all from this year. I hadn't done any of the coastal path before, and um, this year, just like wow. Um, and that's there's so many elements. I mean, as I described in the video, you've got the the coves, which are like the, the kind of the rock cave structures that are there. That beautiful view once you get to the end of it from the Anstruther other side to Creel well, Creel Harbour, and then you go. Uh, been down to Cale Harbour for, for a wee explore there as well and the views across the Isle of May, uh, Bass Rock, North Berwick as well and um, yeah just that's the, that's the best part and best section of it in my opinion. Views across the fourth to the Isle of May and to Bass Rock. Beautiful beaches and the stunning sight of one of Scotland's most picturesque fishing villages. At the end of the route you may wish to walk into Creel it's well worth a look around, including exploring Creel Harbour. And then you can do it all over again for the return route with the added bonus of a chippy in Anstruther after a day exploring. That's a big thing. You've got to do a lot more to do. Find them all. Come <laughs> back, and then there's the chippy at the, the, at the end to, to come back to it. It's a good, it's a good one. Actually, that walk, funnily enough, um, I think it was last week won the the award. I think it was was it the Witch um, website and um, got people voted that as the be the best walk in all of Scotland. That that part of the the Fife Coastal Path was the best in all of Scotland. And I'm not I'm not shocked. You know, it's a it's a regular running route. I tend to park in Ely and then I'll run over to Anstruther and run back. Um, and you take into Newark Castle, you know, St Monan's Kirk, um, the windmill, the salt pans, and everything like that as well. You know, so that's what I love about that that route. And then you know, as you as you said yourself, I, I you know I I decided one day that I tell you what I'll just run around to St Andrews from Anstruther. 
18 miles later. That must be good. That must be good. That must be a great route. All right. Well, 18 miles later, and sore legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it would be an easy gig, and then I got around to Kings Barns, and uh, and it was like, whoa, this is a lot different to what the coastal path at the front is. Um, but the spectacular views as you go around Creole Golf Course. You know, on that on that edge, and and just overlooking the the North Sea and everything like that, that it's just glorious, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned Ely. Ely is a beautiful place. That's somewhere I've been to quite a few times. And obviously, with Ladies Tower there, the walk around there is a, a beautiful one. Um, and then the Ely Chain Walk. I did, I've done that. I think I did that last year for the first time. I've done it again this year. And it's just something I'd, I would never have thought like Fife, Fife would have. It wasn't something I, I was aware of. And once you do it, you're like, well, this is, this is great. This is it's something so different to what I've done, done before in such a beautiful location as well to do the kind of scrambling up the chains there. I'm amazed at the barracks and the, the old gun towers and battalion division, you know, on the on the top of Ely yep. Point, where the actually in the in the war, they actually protected the coastline and they stopped, you know, um all these all, all the enemy boats coming up. Um it's just it's just amazing to see all that. Now I don't know about you, but I, I have lived here all my life. I am now 54 year old and only in the last four or five years I've realized that this stuff's on my doorstep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same like I said that this this year um, I just really hadn't really discovered that much of Fife at all, and this this year I've just been absolutely blown away with what we've what we've what we've got here, and just the range of stuff um, as well. We're just we're we're really lucky to to live in such a, a beautiful region. We really, really are. Absolutely. So um, to finalise, you know, you know, Ross, you have set up all this uh, information for people, and really, it's it's to, it's it's probably as well to help people overcome uh, and you know depression uh, to a degree. I mean, that's why you've done it in the beginning. So you've got your you've got your website, which is Mountain Men's Minds, Mountains Men's Minds, Mountain Men's Minds. social media page, and then you've probably got your YouTube channel as well, haven't you? Uh, yeah, got them. Yeah, so there's, uh, I think this year, yeah, so, so no, so this year, it was just a few weeks ago when I set up the Ross Cunningham hiking for for Facebook. I just realised that there was a quite a few like different videos and pictures that I quite fancied sharing. So there's quite a few different things where. I'll go out there to try and inspire people. And like with these videos I've been making the last few weeks, like with the coastal path, like with the the Narty, the Narty Hills one that, you, that you've shown, it's just to try to show people visually what, what there is. And to try and make them quite short as well, like kind of one minute, two minute videos that hopefully somebody watches in a, in a short, in, in a couple of minutes. And then they're hope, hopefully inspired or at least encouraged to, to at some point go out and explore what, what we've got in Fife. So finally, then, what would you, what advice would you give people, you know, that are going through this, that are going through depression and stuff like that? What advice would you give them, a, y- a young person today? Because it, 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 I've come from a generation where it was taboo to talk about it. You know, basically, you didn't talk about it. You were a man, you were strong, and if you talked about it, you were weak, and you were, you know, you were basically pushed to the side. And so that's my generation I've come from. So, but what would, what would, what should, we, what should a young person do? To, I think like two two things, uh, well maybe three things actually. What one thing is to like open up about it. So like whether it's like, a friend or a family member or something, I think that is is quite hard to take that step and to say to somebody, look, I'm struggling, and um, just to, and just to talk about it. And once you've maybe kind of gone from there, the second thing would be to to seek support, speak to like your GP, look online as well, like Sam H, and um, Scotland's National uh, Mental Health Charity got a great website and have lots of great tips for. For what to do to help your 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 mental health um as well and, and maybe point in the direction of maybe speaking to somebody about it there's obviously the samaritans helpline that's that's a really good thing as well and yeah i guess obviously i'm, I'm sitting here and preaching outdoors as well i think for me as i've discussed it gave me a, a focus maybe feel better once you do exercise it releases endorphins it makes you just feel a little bit happier it helps you clear your head what i really like to be hill walking is that when when i'm walking in the hills and you get to the top of a hill and you're looking out on on a stunning site, whether it's one of the Monroes or Benarty Hill or Largo Law, um, it just gives you a different perspective. It makes you kind of think of things a little bit differently. Maybe if you're sitting at home and obviously we've had the lockdown and you're sitting at home, things can maybe sometimes kind of build up in your mind a bit more than they should be. And once you kind of get outside and go for a walk, you just feel that feel that a little bit better. So I just, I, I think there's quite a good campaign that thinks paths for all with Sam H are doing um, through January is to encourage everybody to get out at least once a day to go for a walk, whether it's half an hour um, around your local area or, or up a hill or, or something or along the coastal path. So I've just encouraged people to try to maybe maybe to do that. Just every day, just think, I'm just going to get out for half an hour. And I, I, 
in most cases, once you go out for that half an hour and you come back, you'll feel that a little bit better about things. It isn't easy in the beginning, is it, really? it's you know, you, You've almost got to force yourself to do it because you, you, if you're in that state of mind, you don't want to do it. That's true. Oh, yeah, definitely. And like I said, there's there's times even like when um, initially when I was going up Monroe's and I just turned back, I just, I'm not feeling this. And there's times that period as well when I was going to the gym, I'd sit down at, um, at some weights or something, ready to do it, walk there, ready to do it. And then when I kind of sat down, I, I just felt I'm not feeling this. I just like, I, and when you feel like I can't, you feel like you can't do it, you just, you can't do it and you, just, you kind of go, go home. But um, if you kind of feel... That, like, that's you know, okay, isn't it? That's okay. The key is not to beat yourself up mentally and say because you can't do it that's the wrong thing it's uh, it's okay not to be okay you know that's the reality so you know I, I think it's just take a step back isn't it take a step back and just you know tomorrow's another day but don't beat yourself up about it yeah and not to be too hard on yourself that's maybe a big thing i'm guilty of is that i can be really really hard on myself for for things so just uh yeah if you if you're not feeling bit feeling like you're, you're up to doing it one day that's totally fine and um, maybe yeah like you said maybe the next day um, but also important things alongside trying to get some exercise is to try to be open about it with, with other people, whether it's yeah, a, a pal, member of your family, even some somebody you work beside or something that you can trust, just to try to be a little bit open if, if you are going through a hard time. And this year, like <laughs> we've all got license to um to to think to, to to feel that we're going through like a really hard time and to be struggling mentally. It's, it's been a it's been a horrible year um for for a lot of people. So there's uh, there's no shame at all in opening up and just saying I'm struggling. And then it is a case of speak to your doctor. I mean, I, I know, you know, he, he's maybe watching. But I know, I've, I've told him time and time again, go and speak to your doctor. And they keep saying to me, you know, I'll do it in the new year. I'll do it in the new year. And it's like, well, you please, because I know I can see it in you. Go and speak to your doctor. But there's a there's this old thing about the doctor's going to put me on drugs and he's going to, and I'm going to be zonked out. And, I'm you know, I'm not going to be able to, you know, that's what his perception is. And it's like, wait a minute, that, it's there to help you. <laughs> it's there to help you recover. It's not there to. It's not there to put you on the back burner. Yeah, and just yeah, just to kind of obviously trust trust the medical professionals, I, I guess, and yeah, just I suppose that people can just kind of try to bottle up and just try to like you're saying put things off maybe or whatever. But just if you're if you're struggling, just try and be open about it and do it and do it as quickly as possible because you'll you'll feel better about it. Yeah. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Ross. I appreciate your time today and uh, and everybody else for watching. Thanks very much for watching and uh, and we'll see you next time.